Hello again, this is Richard Wright with Software BISC, and today we're going to talk about getting started with T-Point and the SkyX Professional. T-Point is Software BISC's telescope modeling and pointing solution that is used by nearly every major professional observatory in the world, but it is also available to you via the SkyX Professional Imaging Suite. Despite being the most powerful solution available for professionals or consumers, T-Point is actually very easy to use, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the whole process. So using T-Point with the camera has three prerequisites before we can get started. First, you have to be able to get to reasonable focus. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the stars need to not be donuts or large blobs. Second, you have to save your FITS files to disk so that ImageLink can work on them. Third, you must be able to ImageLink. Once you're able to do these three things, T-Point really is extremely easy to use. Okay, so let's get started. I've started the SkyX Professional, and for this demonstration I'm going to use the Scope and Camera Simulator. The first thing you need to make sure of is that your location is correct. Also, the date and time need to be accurate in order for T-Point to do its best work. Next, we're going to open the T-Point Settings dialog and make sure we don't already have a T-Point model loaded. We're starting here from fresh. If you do have one loaded, you can just, under the setup, uh, clear out the old pointing model, say yes there, and you're good to go. Now there's, there's no model loaded and we're ready to start from, from scratch. Next we're going to connect to both the telescope and the camera. And our first T-point sample can actually be anywhere in the sky. It could be the home position or off to the side. Uh, we do generally try to avoid the meridian or anywhere near the celestial pole. Really the celestial pole should be avoided most of the time. Uh, the meridian is fine except for our first uh, starting point. Sometimes we don't want to necessarily start there. So when you're ready, go ahead and take your first photo and we're going to want to image link it as soon as we get it uh, downloaded. There's two ways to run image link from the FITS viewer. One is the photo menu. Uh, the other is you can right click right on the image file itself and send it right over. Now if you don't know the image scale, you can always try an image link with unknown image scale uh, and it will determine that for you. Or you can try the all sky blind image link also as an option. Uh, if image link finds it for you, you can click set and then known image scale and it will pop it right in for you. When you've successfully image linked an image, it will be placed on the sky chart in the correct location and orientation. Once it's on the sky chart, you can just click on the image to select it. You know you've successfully selected the image when the yellow text shows up that says image linked photo. Now we'll simply add this image linked photo as our first T-point sample. Go to the telescope tab and select add pointing sample. The start calibration run dialog will show up and make sure full is checked because we're starting a full brand new run. Most amateurs can safely ignore the atmospheric refraction parameters in the middle of this dialog especially if they are portable and just setting up for a single night. A permanent facility that needs exceptional night-to-night -night accuracy, however, can enter and update these values nightly if they find it necessary. So, click OK, and we've created our first T-point model. Of course, we only have a single point added to our model. Now, before we start doing an automated calibration run, I find it's good practice to add the first couple of few uh, pointing samples manually. And it's a, good, it's a good way to kind of repeat what we just did to drill it in. So I'm going to slew to another object about uh, 10 or 20 degrees away and take another photograph. So of course my downloads are very fast because this is all simulated. You might need a 5 or 6 second exposure uh, under a real sky. I'll send that to image link and plate solve it. And again it's placed right on the screen and I'll click on it to select it. Notice instead of just the yellow text image link photo, it's prepended the name of the object that I clicked on uh, in front of it. That's fine, it just means I've selected the photo and we're ready to add it as our next pointing sample. Which we'll do in the same way before. Just click add pointing sample and we get an updated report on our scatter plot. Now for this example, 0.3 arc seconds is exceedingly small. In the real world, this is going to be some tens, hundreds, or maybe even a thousand arc seconds uh, off for your first or second sample, depending on how uh, misaligned your mount is initially or uh, how unlevel uh, your tripod is. 
Now, the very reason I like to add the first few samples manually is I want to avoid a certain type of error. Uh, I'm going to simulate it here by trying to add a sample that's way out of whack. And you see you get this dialog box. If you see this error about a pointing sample that appears to be an error, that it's an early warning sign that your initial polar alignment is off considerably. The default value is 5 degrees or more, which is quite significant. If you haven't seen this error by the time you've added two points manually, you're probably in pretty good shape. Just to make sure though, I like to add one more point on the opposite side of the meridian. Over on the other meridian, there's usually any non-perpendicularities, I should say, uh, tend to show up a little stronger. So by adding one on the other side of the meridian and not getting the error message, we've sort of ensured that we're in pretty good shape. We've got at least a reasonable initial alignment and so it's safe to go ahead and start an automated calibration run. So I'm just going to add this uh, third image to my pointing sample, I mean to my pointing model, pardon me, select it on the screen, rinse and repeat, right? Just kind of uh, reinforce what we're doing here. Go to the telescope tab again, add pointing sample. So we've got three samples now in our T-point model. Uh, we really need to have six or more before all the really good stuff starts to happen. So let's go ahead and start an automated calibration run. So again, we bring up the T-Point Settings dialog, click on the Calibration Run tab, and then there's a button, Automated Calibration, which brings up the dialog. Now the Automated Calibration Run dialog has tabs that work from left to right. Starting with Setup, we need to set our exposure time. Usually four, five, or six seconds is fine. Uh, the image scale uh, from, our, uh, from our image link. Uh, also, if we want to do any binning or use a particular filter. Uh, one thing that I find helpful is to change the search area to eight fields of view, especially for portable users. Um, if your initial alignment is off, you want to make sure it searches uh, in a good area around that. If you really can't get image link to work, you could also try the use all sky image link. Uh, all sky image link runs a little bit slower than the normal image link, but it's a bit more robust, uh, especially if you're not really well aligned uh, your first time out. The next tab is Create Pointing Targets. This is where we select where on the sky we want to collect pointing samples. There's a slider at the bottom where you can adjust fewer samples or more samples, uh, or I should say targets. Uh, you can move these little orange dots to select what part of the sky. Uh, that you want to collect. You can adjust the azimuth. Uh, you can also adjust the altitude by dragging that in and out. We really want to avoid the North Celestial Pole or the NCP area. Uh, there'd be dragons there, as they say, mathematically. You can also add points manually just by clicking in the little legend here. And I like to kind of fill in the wedge with, uh, with a few points. Um, and then we're ready to go. And so now we're ready for our last tab, Acquire Pointing Samples. Simply click Run at the bottom left-hand corner, and your mount will automatically start slewing uh, around the sky and collecting samples. It takes an image at each location, image links, and automatically adds it to the T-point model. Now one thing I like to do, I like to look up when I do this, and you can turn on and off uh, show pointing samples on the, on the sky chart. Uh, right there it is. Uh, so you can see kind of the progress as you move around the sky. And you'll see it updates the dialog, you know, OK, pointing sample added. And if anything goes wrong, an error message will be uh, displayed here. We should be OK. That's one of the reasons we went all over the sky, uh, to make sure we're not going to get any index errors or anything from pointing samples that are too far off. So fast forwarding a little bit of time, our model, our, our run is done. So I'll dismiss the automated dialog, and I'll bring up the T-Point Settings dialog and we'll be able to see that we've got a full calibration run, lots of samples uh, to choose from. We'll get a little report of our pointing accuracy uh, so far. Uh, to get a good model though, we'll go to the Model tab and select Supermodel. That's where the real analysis uh, takes place and we'll get a refined uh, pointing estimate. Uh, and in this case for our simulator it's 1.2 arc seconds which is a much smaller value than you can expect with uh, a real pointing run under the real sky. Of course, it'd be a real shame if you had a nice model but did not apply pointing corrections. This is on by default, but occasionally people forget to turn it on. 
Also, if you have a Paramount or a Taurus, you can turn on ProTrack, which is great. You know, you can get real-time tracking corrections based on the T-Point model. Also available at the end of the T-Point run is a polar alignment report that will tell you your polar alignment errors in altitude and azimuth. And if you have a Paramount, even the appropriate number of tick marks to adjust your mount by. If the alignment errors are significant and you do wish to make a mechanical mount adjustment, you do not have to start over and run an entirely new model. Go to the Calibration tab and finish the current model. Then start a new automated calibration run. This time we're going to perform a portable recalibration and we need far fewer pointing samples. Usually between 20 and 25 is actually enough. Once you've set up enough samples for the recalibration run, go to Acquire Pointing Samples and click Run. Make sure you change the type to Recalibrate Portable Telescope. This will update only the portions of the model that pertain to the altitude and azimuth of the mount, which you've just changed. For more details and advice on T-Point best practices, see the accompanying T-Point Quick Start Guide or the full documentation in the T-Point User's Guide or SkyX Professional User's Guide.